Good evening. Now we're going to have another session. We are almost done with this uh, course and we are going to uh, end this course tomorrow. So we are going to uh, have this uh, session in which we are going to in the vocabulary that we are going to use or the uh, phone calls or the vocabulary that we are uh, studying for these uh, kind of topics or this kind of action that is uh, calling on the phone or creating communication on the phone. So we are going to end the vocabulary that we were using the last week. And then we are going to have uh, some examples of conversation that we can have on the phone or using this kind of vocabulary that we were studying the last session. So we are going to begin because I um, I were a little bit late for this session, but don't worry. So we are going to see that we were uh, talking about mobile phone on this um, vocabulary. So we are going to follow by that in the vocabulary that we were using for this um, kind of vocabulary that we were creating in the last session. So give me a second. So now we have the other word that we are going to use. In this, we have pay phone or phone boot, now, that is a noun. But in this case, we have pay phone. That is something very easy to understand that is that what is a pay phone. So we have the example, there aren't many pay phone left these days. There aren't many pay phones left these days. And what is the meaning? A public telephone that takes coins or phone card payment for each call made. So in this case, the payphone son los teléfonos eh, pagados que, a los que se les ponían monedas para hacer las llamadas. So the example, there are many payphones left these days. And the meaning, a public telephone that take coins or phone card payment for each call made. Then we have the other one that is pick up. That is a verb. Ah, in this case, I, I didn't write that this one is a noun. Then we have here, pick up. And this one is a verb. And the example says, the phone ran and everybody started at it, but then Maria slowly picked it up. So what is the meaning of this? To answer a landline phone by lifting the receiver.
So in this case, it's an action that we uh, do when someone is calling. And we are using these landline uh, phones that we were um, reading in the last week that the landline are the phones that we have in our houses that has a line. And in this case, it's the action to leave, to pick it up, to leave that receiver to have the call. Pick up is levantar. In this case, it's, we're talking about the phone. Estamos hablando de levantar el recibidor o el teléfono, right? So in this case, it's a verb that it's the action to leave something, or in this case, the phone. Then we have another one and it says receiver. That is the last word that we have in the explanation for pickup. So we have receiver. In this case, this is a noun. And we have the example. The phone. So we have in the first one, we have the receiver that is a noun and it says the example. The phone ran and John pick up the receiver and say, hello. And the meaning is the part of a landline telephone said to pick up and speak into is the same thing that we were saying in the last example, that the receiver is the part that we can lift of the phone and we can hear the voice of the other person that is talking. So in this case, John pick up the receiver to hear who is talking and he says hello. So now we have return a call or call back. In that case, it's a verb. And we have the example. He didn't return my call, so I knew something was wrong. He didn't return my call, so I knew something was wrong. And the uh, meaning is to telephone someone who tries to telephone you. So in this case, it's the action to call someone back because that person maybe wants to talk with us and uh, that person was uh, trying to communicate with us, calling to our phones. Maybe we were in a meeting or maybe we were 
like very vastly and we cannot uh, call that person. But in this moment, we are calling back. So, uh, re uh, regresar una llamada o llamar de regreso o devolver la llamada. That's the meaning of that phrase. En, eh, en, el en el ejemplo tenemos, no me regresó la llamada, así que sabía que algo estaba mal. Es llamar a una persona que trató de llamarnos o regresar la llamada de alguien que estaba tratando de comunicarse con nosotros. Then we have another one. We are almost uh, done with this vocabulary. So we have ring. This is a verb. And the example says, the phone was in the bathroom, so I didn't hear ring. So it says, the telephone was in the bathroom, so I didn't hear it ring. And the explanation of the meaning is of a telephone to make the sound that tells you something is calling. That is the sound that our telephones do when someone is calling. Es el sonido, ¿verdad? Que hace o el, la acción de sonar cuando alguien está llamando. That is the meaning of a ring. And also we have a ringtone. That is a very common word that maybe all of you have uh, read in some place of you have heard of that noun, a ringtone. And it, uh, this is a noun. And it says, I should change my ringtone. I'm sick of hearing this one. And the explanation or the meaning is one of many sounds a smartphone can make when someone is calling. So the ringtone is the sound. It's a sound that the, the smartphone can do. And we can change because there are a lot of sounds that we can use to make our ringtone. So in este caso, estamos hablando de eh, uno de los muchos sonidos que podemos eh, ponerle nosotros a los eh, teléfonos inteligentes o el smartphone para cuando alguien nos esté llamando. That is the ringtone. Then we have this one. Maybe it is not very common, or maybe you can um, say that you have read this word before, but let's see. We have the robocall. The robocall. Maybe you are um, 
thinking about a, a meaning of this one. And it says, most people hate getting robocalls, don't they? And we have the meaning. That is an automatic call that plays a recorder So, robocall, maybe you have a, a, the meaning of this one. It's not very complicated to understand what is a robocall, but in this case, we have the example. Most people hate getting robocalls, don't they? And the meaning says, an automatic call that plays a recorder message, usually to sell something or get votes in an election. In this case, estamos hablando de los mensajes pregrabados, ¿verdad? Ese tipo de llamadas que tenemos de las empresas. Donde es para una encuesta o para vender algún producto y en algunas eh, ocasiones para obtener votos en una elección. That are the robocalls. Then we have text message or text now. We are almost, almost, almost done with this vocabulary. We have text message or text. This one are nouns. I mean, outside. And we have the example. He sent me lots of text messages after I told him our relationship was over. Oh, that's very bad. And the meaning of this is a short message service. And we have this one, SMS, the short form, text only. So in this case, we have the text messages or just like that, the text. And we have the example. He sent me lots of messages after I told him our relationship was over. In this case, she's talking about that uh, he sent a lot of text message uh, to the phone, even when she said that the relationship was over. And the meaning is a short message service text only 
message or a multimedia message with digital images, videos, sound, and uh, sound content, and a lot of things. In this case, we can send um, documents, we can say movies, we can send uh, books, we can send um, images, we can send, uh, I mean, games, we can send a lot of things through uh, the messages in our uh, smartphones. Así que el mensaje de texto o el texto es un mensaje o en este, en este caso es un servicio de mensajería corta que solo lleva texto o que puede ser un mensaje multimedia donde podemos enviar lo que son imágenes eh, digitales, videos, sonido, música, eh, libros, películas, and a lot of things because now the eh, technology is very, very advanced. Then we have another one that is couch screen. And this one is a noun. And we have the example. My grandma says she has trouble using the touch screen on her phone. And the meaning of this word is a screen that allows So touch screen, a screen that allows a smartphone, tablet, a computer, game console, or a similar device to be controlled with the touch of a finger. In these days, we can use a, also the a smartwatch, this kind of watch in which we can uh, receive some messages, images, um, uh, a lot of functions. So in this case, the touch screen is the screen that has the smartphones, tablet, computer, and this kind of smart devices in which we can touch the screen and we can control it by that simple touch. So in este caso tenemos la pantalla que puede ser, verdad, controlada con el toque, verdad, de uno de nuestros dedos y que en muchos de los casos hay personas que tienen Eh, algunos problemas para utilizarlos. And we have two more words and we are going to end this vocabulary. Then we are going to uh, have um, some examples of conversation that we can uh, use in the future to talk about these kind of topics, um, talking about maybe technology, maybe uh, some devices. Also, it's uh, to make practice of the conversation through the phone. So now we are going to use the last, last two words that are Wi-Fi or, wi or Wi-Fi because we have two kind of uh, written forms of this word. So we have this one that is Wi-Fi or this one. That is the same thing. It is just the way to write this word. So in this case, we have the example. Oh, but first, this is a noun. 
And we have here the example. And we have here the meaning. So we have Wi-Fi and we have the example. We have Wi-Fi throughout the, the building, so you can use your smartphone or computer anywhere you like. And the meaning says a technology that allows smartphone, tablet, computer, video games, console, smart TVs, etc., to access a wireless local area network. So in this case, we're talking about something that it has to be with the technology. En este caso estamos hablando ¿verdad? de la tecnología que permite a los teléfonos inteligentes, las tablets, las computadoras, los videojuegos, las consolas, incluso los televisores que ahora son Smart TV o televisores inteligentes, accesar a una área sin tener que utilizar eh, un cable, ¿verdad? Son sin cable este tipo de networks o conexiones. So, the example sets, tenemos eh, este internet inalámbrico o this Wi-Fi a través de todo el edificio. Así que puedes utilizar tu teléfono celular o tu computadora en cualquier lugar que tú quieras. And the last one, we have the last, last one of these eh, words that we have in the vocabulary. And this one is wireless network. That is the uh, almost the last uh, phrase that we are going to use in this um, last example. So we have wireless network. And we have the example that it says, your phone can hook into networks in other countries. And we have the explanation or meaning.
So in this case, we have the wireless network and we have the example and it says that um, your phone can hook up into networks in other countries if your service provider has deals with them. And also we have the meaning that it says that a system of radio a frequency cell towers that transmit phone calls and other digital data within a limited service area. So in this case, we are going to say that the wireless network is la red inalámbrica. That is the meaning of this um, of this word. Uh, it says that el teléfono puede utilizar cualquier red, uh, in this case, the wireless network in other countries, si el, el proveedor de teléfono nos permite o nos ayuda a que esto sea posible. Then it says there is a system of radio frequency, es un sistema de, de frecuencia radial, o tenemos una eh, torre telefónica de frecuencia radial que transmite este tipo de llamadas telefónicas y otros datos digitales, incluso en lo que son eh, áreas limitadas de servicio. Now, we are going to end this part of the vocabulary. Now, we are going to uh, continue with another part of this topic, that is the telephone English phrases. But in this case, we're not going to see in the, in the um, uh, screen. We are just um, going to have this quick um, a review of some phrases that we can use in this kind of um, on this kind of things that we can use in English. So we are going to have some words that we can use in this kind of uh, things or conversation. And we have there are different type of phones. That is something that we need to know, and maybe we already know. And we have the cell phones or mobile phones that in this case we were mentioned that are the smartphones. Then we have the type number two that are the pay phones or public phones that are another of the word that we were learning in the um, vocabulary. Also, we have the regular telephone you have in your house, it's called landline. To differentiate from the cell phone, the phone on the right, in, in, I mean, the phone uh, that has some uh, lines or wires are the, um, I mean, the uh, landline phones, but also we have another kind of uh, cell phone that are the cordless phone or the uh, phones that we can call in Spanish, I mean, Los teléfonos inalámbricos. We have to two kind of uh, cell phones that we use in our house that are the landline and the uh, cordless phone. When someone calls you, the phone makes a sound. We say the phone is ringing. If you are available, you pick up the phone or answer. In this case, we are going to use the verb answer the telephone in order to talk to the person. If there is nobody to answer the phone, or then the caller will have to leave a message on an answering machine or voicemail. Later, you can call back or return the call. When you want to make a phone call, you start by dialing the number and let's imagine that you can call your friend, but she's already on the phone with someone else you will hear a bassy signal or beeping sound that tells you the other person is currently using the phone. Sometimes when you call a company, they pack you on hold. This is when you wait for your call to be answered, usually while listening to music. Finally, when you are finished with the conversation, you hang up. Now that you know, or we can apply this kind of words in a, Maybe we can say in a paragraph, uh, we have a lot of words and you maybe were thinking, why well, we're saying a lot of words that is very boring, for example, that I know that is very boring because we are constructing a vocabulary and it is necessary to have a lot of words that we can use in a conversation. Why? Because when we are talking, we need tools to 
improve that conversation and to add some new things to that conversation. And when you have um, this kind of vocabulary or you have new words to add to the conversation, maybe the person that you are uh, talking with uh, can uh, have a lot of in attention to the conversation that you are having. So in this case, we are going to do it like this. We are going to have this one application we have application vamos a aplicar algunas de estas palabras que ya estuvimos viendo a este párrafo so we are going to create we are going to uh, mark the the vocabulary that we were learning so we have the example we have the example here and we are going to begin like this when someone calls you, so in this case, we have this one all that we were learning in the vocabulary. We have another word that we were learning that is a ring. In this case, we are using the verb with the ing form. This is another word that we were learning, pick up, that is a verb. Another one, uh, another one answer. Then we have another one. If there's nobody, your answer. So in this case, we I didn't make mark this one and this one. If there is nobody to answer the phone, then the caller. That is the person that is calling. We are going to mark this one. <clears throat> we have to leave a message. We are going to mark this one. That is a message. On an answering machine. Another phrase that we were learning in the vocabulary. Answering machine or voicemail. Later, you can call back. or return the call. So we have two more in this space. Call back, call back, return the call. Then we have another one and it says, when you want to make a phone call, You start by dialing the number. So we are going to mark this one because 
we were uh, saying um, some examples of dialing and the meaning of dial in the vocabulary. So dialing the number. Let's imagine that you call a friend. But she's already on the phone. with someone else. You will hear a buzzy signal. Passive signal. In this case, a beeping. That is the sound, beep, beep, beep. Is the sound of the bicycle or when someone is on the phone, beeping. Another one, sometimes. When you call a company, they put you on hold. This one, uh, we can translate it in espera. Respond in espera. This is when you wait for your call. We answer. Usually, while listening to music. You hang up. Finally, when you are finished with the conversation, would you hang up? In this case, cuelgas o colgar. Finalmente, o oh, cuando ya estás, eh, cuando ya has terminado tu conversación, tú cuelgas. You hang up. So we are going to have a formal um, telephone conversation. We are going to have an example of formal a telephone conversation or um, this kind of conversation that you have with someone that is uh, new for you or someone that is not um, a people that you have met before. So we are going to have another example in this one. We are going to have formal telephone conversation. So we are going to uh, see some words or say, some phrases that we can use in this kind of conversation 
And also we are going to see if they applied this vocabulary that we were um, learning before. So we are going to begin. We have two people. We have Helen and we have Brian. They are having a conversation and now we are going to see what are they uh, talking about. So let me, just give me a second. So let's see, we're going to begin with Helen. And she says, my town computer solutions, Helen is speaking, how can I help you? And then we have a Ryan. Ryan says, hello, this is Ryan Bardos. May I speak with Natalie Jones, please?
Okay, here we have the conversation. That is the formal one. Uh, let's read all the conversation, then we are going to mark the things that are important in this conversation. So we have, again, Helen and Ryan. So it says at the beginning of the conversation, my town computer solutions, Helen is speaking, how can I help you? Hello, this is Ryan Vardos. May I speak with Natalie Jones, please? One moment, please, I will put you through. Mr. Bardos, I'm sorry, Natalie is in a meeting at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Yes, would you ask her to call me back as soon as possible? It's pretty urgent. Of course, does she have your number? She has my office number, but let me also give you my cell. It's 472-555-8901. Let me read that back to you, 472-555-8901. So in this conversation, if you can see, uh, it's someone that wants to talk with uh, this girl uh, called Natalie. And in that uh, conversation, uh, we also have that the uh, girl called Helen put in uh, on hold to this person. So also another thing that you have to remember is that in, um, in the United States, I think it is only in United States. I don't know if in other countries it's like this, but in United States, you can um, say the numbers like this, one by one, by by one. Uh, but in our country, we can say two numbers at the, at the same time. But in, in United States, they um, uh, tell the numbers or the cell phone numbers or the telephone numbers one by one. En esta conversación vemos que es una conversación bastante formal porque es para una empresa o algo por el estilo, porque tenemos Mindtown Computer Solutions. It can be an um, office, it can be um, something related to computer. And it, oh, estamos viendo, ¿verdad? Que hay alguien que recibe la llamada, pero pone en espera, on hold, a esta persona para consultar si eh, Natalie está disponible. Pero no está disponible y le dicen que si puede eh, dejar un mensaje. We have the word message. El, Helen está preguntando si él puede dejar un mensaje. In this case, it is not like. Um, they are using the word that we have here, that is the answering machine or the voicemail, because in this case, someone uh, receive the call. So in this case, it is not the answering machine or the voicemail. Then um, he used this uh, a phrase, call me back, call me back. We also have this phrase in the um, in the vocabulary, call me back or call back. That, uh, that in Spanish is regresar la llamada o llamar de regreso. Él usó esa frase, ¿verdad? Call me back. Y le dijo que era bastante urgente que ella le regresara la llamada. So, in this case, she asked for a number. Le preguntó el número, que si eh, Natalie tenía su número. And he says that she eh, has his number, but um, he wants to tell the personal number. Le quería dejar su nombre personal o privado. Y algo que les decía, en Estados Unidos es bien común que utilicen o que den sus números uno por uno. No es como en nuestro país que lo, lo damos de dos en dos o que lo, lo damos eh, eh, por, por cifras. In that case, in the United States, they um, do like this, that they um, say the numbers one by one. So in that case, we are going to use like that the, uh, to give the uh, numbers one by one in the number or the telephone numbers. So for this uh, conversation, we have this uh, kind of a formal, very formal conversation through the phone. Remember that they are talking on the phone, nor um, they are not seeing each other. They are on the phone. That is the main thing. So this conversation had another part. That is this one. We're going to end this conversation because it's almost time to end the session. So when Helen let uh, 
say to Ryan that she is going to read back the number, he, re, he answered like this. And he says, that's right, because the, the number is correct. Then Helen says, and could you spell your last name for me? This is very important also. Because in some cases, when you are calling uh, to a office in the United States, they'll, they tell you to spell your last name to write it correctly. So in this case, Helen is asking him to spell his last name. And Ryan says, V as in Boston, So it says V as in Boston, A R D as in dog, O S as in September. In this case, they can use this kind of um, like representation of some uh, of these uh, letters because maybe for the pronunciation, it can be very confusing when we um, give this spelling. So in that case, you see that they have some examples of the words that they can use. También es bastante común que a la hora de hacer el spelling, de, um, de letrear el apellido, nombre, o whatever they are spelling, utilicen estos ejemplos con las letras que están utilizando, así como él, be as in Boston, porque les, eh, le resulta más fácil a la persona que escribe tener una... Eh, referencia de la, de la letra que están diciendo. Maybe it can be um, like they are not understanding everything that they are saying because of the pronunciation. So at the end of the conversation, she says, okay, Mr. Bardos, I will give her the message. And he says, thanks a lot, bye. So this is the first conversation. Tomorrow we are going to have another conversations to talk about this topic and remember if you are not on day on on date with the exercise on the platform you have just one a day tomorrow is the last day of this course or this um yes of this course so you have to work in the platform tomorrow because that's the last chance that you have Si no han trabajado en la plataforma, pueden hacerlo el día de mañana. Mañana se acaba el curso. Y si no están a, eh, a, a tiempo con sus ejercicios, pues lamentablemente no se les va a entregar su certificado. Así que si no han trabajado en la plataforma, por favor, háganlo el día de mañana, que ya es el último día del curso. So now it's time to say goodbye. See you tomorrow in the last session of this course. And have a good, good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night.